Thanksgiving week and the Growing Deer team has much to be thankful about. We've already enjoyed many successful hunts, but even more importantly, we're just proud to have the freedom to be able to go hunting and protect our families. That's all part of living in the USA, where our forefathers followed God's plan and designed a constitution unlike any other on the planet. This week, I hope you and your family are living in a safe, secure place, and I hope you take time to give thanks to God. Last week, the Growing Deer team headed to North Central Kansas to hunt with our good friend, Richard Lee. Back in the summer, Adam went out to Kansas and hung some summit stands, and we were excited to check out those sets. Holy cow, you're gonna love this. This property is very typical of North Central Kansas. The land is relatively flat, and large ag fields dominate the landscape. When the crops are harvested, the deer are pretty much limited to river corridors and timber as cover. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconyx, Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Dead Downwind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Whitetail Properties, Flood Sport Arrows, Outdoor Edge Knife, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Caldwell, Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non-Typical Clothing, Howes Lubricator Products, LEM Game Processing, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, Redneck Hunting Blinds. During the first morning of our hunt, the wind was forecast to be out of south. And this was perfect for one of the sets Adam had put in a large wooded peninsula sticking out in the middle of an ag field. While we were getting situated, we spotted deer moving toward our stands. I had a Kansas buck and a doe tag, and the farmer had requested we harvest some does to help with the amount of crop damage he was experiencing. However, the first doe in caught me a bit off guard, and rather than rush the shot, I decided to give her a pass. It's November 6th, so it's prime time. We'll be hunting pretty aggressively, throwing out some blind grunts, and seeing if we can't stir up a little action. Not long into our hunt, Adam heard some grunts in the large ag field right behind our set, so we started getting ready with high expectations. A good buck charged in chasing a couple of does, and he happened to stop right behind a tree. Neither Adam or I had time to estimate his age before he stopped.
He had a good chest and a big neck, but Kansas Deer are big. You notice when you watch that video, there was no stain at all. I think if he was a more mature deer, there'd have been some stain. So, first morning of the hunt, I'm glad to give him a pass. Hoping we see another more mature deer soon. I could have rushed a shot, but Adam and I decided this buck was three years old. This is a great example of why it's so important to use body characteristics and not size to estimate a buck's age. Deer in this part of Kansas have unlimited access to soybeans all summer and spilled grain throughout most of the winter. Their body sizes are much larger than say deer here at the Proving Grounds where the land is primarily covered by timber. Adam and I had a great morning in the stand and we were also excited to see if Richard had seen any deer. Richard and Matt had selected a stand location that was in a narrow bottleneck of timber at the edge of a large ag field. After Richard did a short rattling sequence, they started to see deer. Richard and Matt were seeing portions of deer through the brush, but when they came in full view, Richard grabbed his bow because he saw a good buck. Richard draws right as the buck steps behind a tree, and after a while, he's forced to let the draw down. As the buck moves away, fortunately, he moves in a direction that gives Richard a shot. In all the excitement, the shot falls short and the buck goes on apparently not having any idea what happened. Later in the morning after another rattling sequence, again, Matt and Richard spot antlers coming through the timber. This buck comes on a string to the sound of the rattling antlers, but as he approached quickly, Richard and Matt make a call that the buck is only two and a half years old, despite the buck having a great set of antlers. That was a great buck, and I sure hope we have some more encounters with him during future hunts. Richard's hunt continued with seeing more deer. Later in the morning, another buck and doe move in, and this buck actually makes a scrape and a rub not far from their stand. During the third morning of the hunt, Richard and Matt returned to the same stand because the weather conditions are similar to when they saw all the deer. They saw multiple bucks that morning chasing does, and later in the morning, one of those actually offered Richard a shot.
This time, Richard's shot was true. Looks good. I think we got some lung. It's getting better right here. Oh, yeah. Maybe even lay down. That looks good. Yeah, looks like lung for sure. Here goes, this way. Here's some more here, here. There it is, right there. All right. Yes. Man. Yeah. And next thing you know, we look down and there's a really nice shooter. Well, I had a chance at it and I missed it. So that started the day. So it turned a little better. It was the first time I've ever shot a deer on, with a cameraman, but I'm real happy what's going on. It seems like the rut's picking up. We're seeing more mature deer. We're gonna move over closer to a food source. It's an afternoon hunt, so we can get into where we need to be. It's a small little pinch area. I'm excited about that. Congratulations, Richard, on taking a doe and helping a landowner meet his deer management objectives. Each of us had a lot of bucks in range. All the bucks I saw happened to be immature, but I still had a very enjoyable hunt. Adam and Matt remained in Kansas and had some awesome encounters. Last week, the rut was full on throughout much of the Midwest and we're having lots of great reports from our pro staff. One of the recent stories was from the Coy brothers, Isaac and Zach. November 10th, they were hunting just west of Kirksville, Missouri. The rut was going strong and they headed to a stand named Split Ridge. It's named after a large gnarly buck they were chasing last year. This season, it seems a large buck named Casey is using the same area. The buck was named Casey after Zach's girlfriend, Casey, who missed this buck last year. Just after they get in the stand, they spot a nice young eight-pointer. Well, it's November the 10th. It's about 8.30 in the morning. We've seen, I don't know, five or six does. We had one little eight-point buck skirt the edge of the creek. He was moving pretty good. We took yesterday off. We just we just haven't been seeing any rut movement at all. So we're gonna sit all day today. We've got a big storm system coming in tomorrow, Wednesday the 11th. It's supposed to bring some straight line winds and quite a bit of rain. So that's probably gonna keep us out of the woods. And then after after tomorrow will be Wednesday. Um, we just have Thursday, Friday before rifle season starts. So it's kind of our last little go at it here at our farm in Missouri. It's a perfect day, perfect day for Bowen. Nice calm winds out of the south. It's about 40 degrees. After doing a little grunting, a big buck appears near their stand. He appears to be looking for the source of the grunts Zach made. This buck lets out his own grunt and keeps on walking. Zach and Isaac have to do some quick thinking. They've never seen this buck before. They have to try and age him quickly and decide what to do. Zach decides he'd be happy to tag this buck, so he uses his grunt call once again to see if he can turn him around. Louder, 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 louder. 
I still get a chuckle when I hear guys talk about the snort wheeze call. Early during my career, very few hunters or biologists even knew the term snort wheeze. And that's because most bucks harvested throughout the Whitetails range were a year and a half old. There were very few bucks older than a year and a half and almost no hunters had ever heard the snort wheeze in the wild. It's a good thing Zach knew to use that call because after a short delay, the buck turned around and headed back towards their stand. He's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back. Are you sure? High five. Yes. Dude. You're, oh my gosh. Same shooting. The shot wasn't perfect, but it did the job and the buck expired quickly. I'm Tickle Pink with him. He walked by us. We got time to look at him. We decided we were going to take him, but he already got out of our shooting lane. We grunted aggressively at him again, gave him one little snort wheeze with our mouth, and we finally got it done. October, or November the 10th. November the 10th. We've never seen this deer before on any of our trail cameras on our farm here. The Havoc did its job. I hit the spot, but it was just a tad bit high. Awesome ending to a perfect morning in the deer woods. Like us, the Coy brothers love fresh venison, so they bust out their LEM processing equipment and make quick work of that deer. Well, here I am the day after. I shot this nice buck yesterday. We cut it up last night with our outdoor edge and knives, and today we're gonna grind the majority of the deer up in the deer burger with our LEM game processor. Really easy to use, just chunk your meat up into nice one inch squares, and you got a nice plunger here to push it all down in. That was a great buck and an exciting hunt. The opportunity to call and watch a buck respond to the calls, making a quick shoot, don't shoot decision, that's what drives all of us to go out hunting during the rut. The next day, back in southern Missouri, Chase White has another story to tell. We know from experience how difficult it is to self-film a hunt. That can be even more complicated during the rut when things tend to happen quickly but Chase knew it was prime time and his hunting partner Seth couldn't join him, so he opted to self-film a hunt. November 11th, it's the morning. I'm self-filming. Seth had to work. It's getting down to the wire. Two days left till gun season. We got a storm rolling in. It's supposed to be 70 degrees today. Storm's supposed to get here by one. Hopefully this morning they move. It's about five hours before, so hopefully the deer are on their feet. We're staying in the same set. We tried an evening set. The deer were bedded in here, so we're trying it in the morning. Hopefully. They'll come in here and lay back down. Hopefully there's a good buck with them. As we've seen time and time again this fall, a grunt call can be a very valuable tool to a deer hunter. Not long after calling, Chase hears footsteps and they're closing the distance fast. We 
because he's self-filming, Chase has got to pick one of the shooting lanes and just hope that's the one the buck stops in. Chase picked the right lane, it looks like the shot was good. Yes. I just stuck one. Look like I trailed him. I'm gonna watch back the footage and see, but I think we got a buck down. Well, I just reviewed the footage and crawled out of the stand. I hit him good behind the shoulder, but I think he was quartered to me a little bit. I'm gonna sneak out of here, give him a few hours, then come back. Got a storm rolling in, so I don't wanna give him too long and have it rain, lose blood trail, but he shouldn't be too far. Whew, the footage wasn't great. I was a little bit out, but it's rut. Probably shouldn't have been self-filming. But Seth had to work this morning. Hopefully when he takes a lunch, we can get him to come do a recovery here and we'll retrieve this deer. Stay tuned. Chase calls his filming partner, Seth, who I know now wishes he'd have taken off work and been in a tree with Chase and they both take up the trail. That came out back again. Hair on it. Too. Oh, he ran up this way? Yeah, I got good blood. Good blood? Yeah. Good blood. Nice deer. It is not bad. I'm thrilled with this buck. I haven't killed one since 2013 with my bow. It's been a long drought. I don't know what else to say except the Havoc done its job again. This is two deer with the Havoc and no problem following the blood trail, walking trail. up acorns. Alfalfa and acorns. Congratulations Chase, you did a great job self-filming during the rut. I imagine, but let's put our lead sled up here so we can see. Turn home. We're on paper. Oil in the barrel will drag the bullet down, make it go slower. You blow it out the first shot, second shot, that one's two inches high, quarter inch to the right, just exactly. We're gonna see how she groups before we do any movement here, because we're close to start with. Well, we're right there in the awesome group. Missouri's rifle season opens in a few days. I wanted to make sure both my Winchester 308s were sighted in. I enjoy trying different models and different calibers of guns. But we've got so many people we're taking hunting, I want everyone to be comfortable with the gun. So I've got two Winchester Model 70s, 308s, everything set up exactly the same, got them sighted in the same. So no matter which gun you're using on a particular day, you're good to go. Missouri's firearm season opens Saturday, November 14th. My father, who almost always joins me, has been going through chemo treatments for about two months, but is feeling pretty strong that day, and I was blessed that he joined me Saturday afternoon for a hunt. For this hunt, I selected a redneck blind that's at the very south end of the crabapple food plot. This blind's sitting right on the ground and really easy for dad to get in. 
one of the side effects of the chemo treatment for dad is that he's constantly feeling cold. But I brought a big orange sleeping bag to the blind, wrapped him up, and made sure he was going to stay warm. I'm too full. How much that bullet fall between here and that brush, None. back of the green yard? None, Dad. None. None. Don't hold over. Point it right where you want to hit it. Okay. I can do that. 85-year-old buzzard, still hunting deer. Appreciate every hunt my boy lets me have. I'm going to hunt till the day I die. I need have better the help I can get. I'm in fighting cancer, but I'm about to whip it. I hope I am. I appreciate everything the son does for me, and I'm going to stay with him. Thank you for everything, son. Okay, now, let's say some does come out, and no butts in the field. Are you going to shoot a doe? It's up to you. Do you want to shoot a doe? Yeah. Okay. I'll shoot anything that you tell me to shoot. That if a great big one comes out over here, you probably won't be able to shoot it, so I'll shoot it. I'm teasing you, Dad. Not long into the hunt, Adam spotted a coyote at the far edge of the food plot. We're constantly working to balance the predator and prey populations here at the Proving Grounds, and Pops was more than happy to help. Right. I've got him. You want me to kill him? It's up to you. You want to? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me just come down here and let you pet him. And I scooped him. I think I got him a little low, but he ain't going anymore. I appreciate it. Thank you, son, for letting him shoot him. Thank you. Now you want to put another bullet in this thing in case something else comes out. Later, a yearling buck entered the left side of the field. This is just another example that deer don't often relate gunshots to danger. Dad looked at the yearling buck and instantly decided to give it a pass. Now, Dad's got a green light to shoot any buck here at the Proving Grounds, but he honors my goals of allowing bucks to express most of their antler potential and work towards balancing the adult sex ratio. Just at last light, Adam spotted some does entering the food plot to the left. They're in some very tall Eagle Seed 4-H soybeans. Finally, some of the deer fed through the beans and got into an area where we had drilled the broadside blend. Once they entered this area of the field, I was confident Dad could make the shot. Knowing how quick my dad is on the trigger, Adam wisely stayed wide because we weren't sure which doe he was going to shoot. Well, I've been waiting all in. Finally got a good shot. Uh, I believe I got him good. We'll see you in a little bit. We'll see how it's done. Thank you, son, for putting me on. Thank you, Dad. That's about center shoulder, no doubt about that. Big mature nanny, the hole is right there, dead center shoulder. No wonder she only made it 70 yards, give or take. Pretty short drag to the truck, fresh venison for the freezer. Dad's shot was true, and the doe didn't make it out of food plot. It was a short trail job, obviously, but a memory that will last a lifetime. Right here. There we go. Goodness gracious, that's a fawn killing machine. I should say it was a fawn killing machine. So trapping season actually starts here in a couple days, but coyote season's already open, so we're one up for the year. Back at the skin and shed, we've got the hide taken off Glenn's doe. Now we're gonna look at the entry and exit and all the damage that occurred from the deer season XP ammo. This is the right side, this is the entry. Of course, she was slightly quartering away. You can see pretty massive hole here, a lot of damage, but where we're most impressed is the exit. So here we are, just spun the dough around. Of course, here's a massive exit hole. Like I said earlier, it was slightly quartering away, so it didn't 
fully connect on both shoulders. She only ran about 60 yards, but there's just massive entry and exit. Of course, that bullet's designed for rapid expansion, made specifically for whitetail deer. Huge holes, short blood trails. Recently, we celebrated Growing Deer's sixth anniversary, six years of making a new episode every week. And we're honored to be able to share with you the techniques and information to help you be a better manager and deer hunter. I hope you have the opportunity to spend some time in creation this week, but most importantly, I hope you take time to be quiet and listen each day to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.